Now, in order for the rapture to happen and the tribulation to start, you need that third temple. So everyone's looking at that one, the third temple. Now, here's the thing, is that the third temple, it doesn't have to be where they plan out its construction and they have to complete the whole building in a slow manner, actually. What's interesting concerning the third temple is that it does not have to be a building structure. It could actually be just a simple tent. Now, you might go, what? You're serious? Just a simple tent? Yeah, it can be just a simple tent. And when you have a simple tent as the third temple, then you just put a tent set up, and then you can have the Antichrist coming in and the tribulation starting the clock, start the peace treaty. Now, the thing is this. Is it really true that the Bible shows that uh, a tent can actually be the temple? Yes. The reason why is this is you got to think about before Solomon's temple, what did the children of Israel had all that time? It's the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a tent set up. And when it was a tent set up, you got to realize this. They had sacrifices going and they had the Jewish ordinances running. So think about this. Daniel 9, when it says the sacrifices are starting and then Israel's ordinance is running, all you need is that a similar tabernacle tent set up and then you can start running it. You don't need to complete the building. So that's interesting. But let's start off with 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. And we will read verse 9. So is this really true that the Bible shows that a tent can be a temple? Yeah. Okay, now notice this is before Solomon, right? Building the building. Notice what the Bible calls this. We have 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the what? Temple of the Lord. Let's also look at chapter 3. Chapter 3 and verse 3. Chapter 3 and verse 3. So what we saw, 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 9, we also saw, or we're going to see, chapter 3 and verse 3. So let's look at chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says, And ere the lamp of God went out in where? The temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Once more again, let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22, and we'll look at verse 7. 2 Samuel chapter 22, and we will read verse 7. Notice what David called it. 2 Samuel chapter 22, and we will read verse 7. Notice when the, uh, the psalmist, he gives out his cry to God. Oh, by the way, this is the psalmist speaking David. So look at the book of Psalms then. There's like, uh, David, he wrote, does, uh, he wrote many dozens of chapters. And you'll be surprised how many times he said the temple, the temple, the temple. Yet he wasn't the one who built the temple. God told him not to build the temple. He said, Solomon will build me the temple. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 7. In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his where? Temple. Let's look at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 12 and verse 5. Even in the New Testament, right after they had the temple. So this is when the Jews had their temple. But you're going to find out right here that in Matthew chapter 12, verse 5, Jesus even realized that the tent tabernacle was referred to as a temple. Matthew chapter 12, and we will read verse 5. Notice what the Word of God reads right here. It says, or have ye not read in the law, in the law, right? The law was written by what? Moses. Moses didn't have, I don't think the Levites carried a temple everywhere they went 40 years. They had to carry a tabernacle display. Now look at Matthew chapter 12 and verse 5. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priest in where? The temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. Now, let's assume, I really doubt it, especially with this one, Matthew 12, 5, a New Testament passage, but... Let's assume that they had some sort of building, okay, during that time. 
I won't deny it. Maybe they did. But look at Revelation 15, 5, which is interesting. All right. Look at Revelation chapter 15, and we will read verse 5. Notice what the Bible connects to the temple, which is very interesting. He calls this temple something. It's like interchangeable to him. I think this way, the reason why is this the Lord, what he sees it as is that if there has the same operation and working, he doesn't see the difference. He sees it as the same and interchangeable. It's like the Christian church. It doesn't matter what race or nationality you are. He still sees you as the one and the same church. If he can think like that with his church, which he lives in for his home, why not with his physical home, the temple and the tabernacle that time? Interesting. Look at Revelation 15 and verse 5. So this one, this is interesting. Now this is like after, uh, this is during the tribulation now, when they have their temple. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the what? Tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. Remember the tabernacle tent of Moses? The Lord, he sees as a connection to the temple, tabernacle and temple. So, which is very interesting. So, even assuming that there were some sort of building that time, the Lord, he sees something interestingly, this temple, very similar or interchangeable with the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a tent that time during Moses' day. By the way, Moses' tent, it was patterned after what? The things of heaven. And in heaven, they did have a temple set up, a building temple in heaven. So which is very, very interesting right here. So it could be that you can just get a, uh, a tent set up. And what's interesting is that those Palestinian protests close to uh, around May 14th, they just have a tent set up for that. Wouldn't it be natural that the other side, Israel, might have something set up? Really interesting stuff right there. So that's why... Um, you don't have to have a building temple. You can have a tent. Now, to ruin, your, uh, to ruin everything for you, actually, the thing is this, is that I believe in being very objective and not biased. So the thing is this, is that these verses are very interesting, but I still see this as possibility. It's not doctrine. Now, you might say, why? Do I have a verse of, for it? Actually, I really don't have a verse for it, but I think of it logically speaking. Because think about it, I'm what I'm trying to think about is this, is that the Antichrist, he wants to sit in the temple and rule as God. God's greatest glory was under Solomon's reign and they had a glorious building and a temple. The Antichrist wants to put his headquarter, his living situation, at uh, the temple in Jerusalem. I can't imagine it really being a tent, actually. It's going, it would make sense, it would make better sense if I were the Antichrist to have something, and if I know the devil's mind, who wants to imitate God, he wants to have a glorious temple, his own building set up. Think about it. Look at our world, those fancy buildings, and what's going on right there. You see a lot of sin, a lot of things that the devil has control over those things. Wouldn't it be logical? He would do it the same thing with the Antichrist who takes over the temple right there. So that's why, I, uh, personally, I feel like it's going to be more like a building. But... I'm always open to the possibility that it could be a tent itself, which is very interesting in the Bible. So it could be a tent, and then boom, you're, you're all set, and you're ready. Because think about it, uh, the Pope, he lives in the Vatican, and that's his home. And the Antichrist, he has to be a Pope figure. I'm not sure if you realize that in the Bible. He has to be a Pope figure. So if the... Uh, the Pope lives in a beautiful building like the Vatican and the Antichrist is going to be a Pope who's going to move his residence into Jerusalem. You know, it's going to be a tent. Why not a fancy building like the Vatican, you see? So it's going to make more sense to me that's going to be like a building setup. But I cannot prove that and neither can I prove this side too that it has to be a tent. All right. All we can see is as a possibility, as a possibility. Besides, even with these verses, these verses never said that the temple that the Antichrist will sit in will have to be a tent. It never said that. It just called it a temple. So it could be either a building or a tent. We just don't know. But what we can see is this, is that we can be open to all possibilities. And that's 
how you should be with the Bible. Very objective, and you got to be open to all possibilities and not pick and choose which one you like because you find it interesting and you want to teach that.